so what we're looking at today, this is section 9.1. And the thing with 9.1, let me just look at my camera, okay, I think that's okay. The, um, we're solving for variables. And we've been sort of dancing around this the whole time. So first off, what are variables? Well, variables are unknown numbers. So if you have something like this, this right here, this unidentified number, that's a variable. So the idea with variables is they are still numbers. We just happen not to know which one. And so that means we're going to treat them as numbers. So we can add things to them. We can subtract things from them. We can multiply numbers to them. We can divide them by numbers. But I mean, there's only so far we can go because unless we actually know which number it is, we, we have to kind of stop. Now, what happens here is we, we typically use simpler symbols for variables. And we usually use symbols that are um, not as complicated as this and that don't look like numbers. So we typically use simple uh, symbols that don't look like numbers. So when you see a variable, you oftentimes see it written as like x. So we're still talking about the same variable as we are here. We're just using a different symbol for it. Again, it's this unknown number. So typically what we want to do is try to identify that number. Now it's kind of a riddle. So you can try guess and check. Like you could say, well, okay, what some number plus one equals five. What must that number be? So you have x plus one equals five. Well, x must be four. Or we say x equals or is the same as four. So that's it. A variable is a number. We just don't know which one. And so we can look at the equation and we can say, gosh, what number would that be? Something plus one gives you five. Oh, well, there's only one number that does that. Four. Four plus one gives you five. So x must be equal to four. And there you go. You solve for x. Now, the story of algebra is, as much as it's kind of nice to guess and check, it can get kind of difficult. We're going to get some pretty complicated equations. So we're going to use some techniques for solving for x without guessing. And we're going to use this observation with the equal sign. This is going to be key. It's kind of obvious, maybe. 
But what the equal sign means is we have to have the same quantity on either side. The same quantities must always exist on either side of that equal sign. So the way you can balance this, I'll give some examples. We can take eight and we could balance eight with say 10 minus two. So we have eight and this is also eight. We could do this. And actually, for multiplication, I'm going to use a dot. So when we get into algebra, we typically use dots for multiplication instead of a little x because we don't want to confuse the time symbol with x. And if you check, sure enough, 11 times 10 is 110. Or we could do something like this. Now, to figure this one, what you want to do, take the square root of 4 first. You do that, you'll get 2. So this will become 2 plus 1 is 3. So this top part becomes 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this side here, that's also 1. So there's a lot of different ways of balancing these equations. So that's going to be the key. We have to keep quantities balanced. So a key assumption with equations is when we're given an equation, we assume it's balanced. So if we have x plus 1 is 5, whatever x is, it has to be a number that if we add it to 1, we get 5 on this side. And of course, we found out what that number was. It's only one number we have for x has to be 4. So this is the idea with equations. The equal sign says the same quantity must be on either side, regardless of what these quantities look like. And there's one other key assumption, and this is what we're going to do. We will always maintain that balance.
Now, the key word here, as we must always keep this balance, is the word balance. What this means is we can change the quantity on either side. They just have to always be the same quantity. So if we added another one to make this six, we'd have to add a one over here to make that six. So that's the idea of balance. It's going to be about balance. All right, so basically what this says is this. What we do to one side of the equal sign, we must do to the other. So we don't have to keep the same, like the quantities in this case, they don't have to stay five on either side, but they do need to be balanced. So if we subtract one from one side, we've got to subtract one from the other side. And so there they would now both be four. And that's okay. As long as they're balanced, it's all right. We can change the quantities, but they just have to always be the same as each other. At the very top, it says what equation is balanced? We assume equation is balanced. Is that getting cut off? Yes, it's just the very top part. I can't oh, see. Oh, here, let me see if I can fix that. Thank you. Is that better? Just a little bit more, please. There. Oh, awesome. So let me give you an example of this balancing act. So let's start out with five is equal to five. So to handle an equation properly, if we add one to one side, we have to add one to the other. So this is still good. It's still balanced. So again, it's okay to change the type of quantity. In this case, it's a five and do a type six. We just have to make sure it's the same on either side. We can't have a six and a five here. And then what we could do, let's divide by two. And then we'll get three on either side. So this is still balanced. And then we could uh, multiply both sides by, say, 5. We'll get 15. And finally, we could subtract, I don't know, 7. And so we'll get eight as long as things are balanced our equation is correct So any questions about that? All right. So why even do this? This is sort of silly. Like if you just took a piece of paper out, let's say you're hanging out someplace and you just say, well, there's three equals three. And then I might add something, then divide, then multiply and subtract. I mean, okay, great, getting good at keeping equations balanced, but 
how does this help for anything? Well, let's go back to that x plus 1 equals 5. Now again, we assume that this is balanced. So if this is 5, this also has to be somehow equal to 5. X is doing something to make that happen. So what we could do let's subtract 1 from both sides. And if I subtract 1 from this side, I better subtract one from the other. Now, we don't know what x is. It is a number, we're just not sure which one. So subtracting one from a number we don't know, we're just stuck. So, but we can subtract the one from this part of the left side. That's perfectly fine. So let's do that. One minus one is zero. And then on this side, 5 minus 1 is 4. And then x plus 0, well, again, x is a number. So when you add 0 to a number, does it change anything? No, it doesn't change anything at all. So just like 3 plus 0 is 3, x plus 0 will still be x. Adding 0 to x won't change it. And so we're left with x x must be 4. Questions about that? Let me do another one. Now, I said they typically use symbols for variables that are simple and don't look like numbers. They actually break that rule a lot. So you're going to see a lot of different variables that um, Kind of could look like numbers like B, depending on how you write your B. Some people might write a B that looks like a 6. So be careful with B. Anyway, let me do another example. So let's say we're going to solve for Y. So some numbers subtract 3 equals to 7. And again, you could probably guess what this number is. But let's say we can. So what we can do if we subtract 3, but then we add 3, well, that kind of cancels the subtraction. Like if I have $10 and then I lose 3, and then I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. So I have $7 left. But then I walk around and, oh, there's that $3 that fell out of my pocket. And I add it back, went back to the original $10. So adding three will cancel out the subtracting of three or the losing of three. But again, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. You can think of it as like balancing weights. If I add three pounds on this side, Got to add three pounds on the other to keep it balanced because we assume it's already balanced. So negative three plus three, well, that's going to be zero. And you could write it as plus or minus. It doesn't really matter. I always write plus zero. But when you're adding or subtracting zero, it doesn't change anything. And then we have 10. And so we get y is equal to 10 because, again, adding or subtracting, whichever you prefer, adding or subtracting 0 is not going to change whatever number this is. And it turns out this number, this variable, is balanced by 10. So this mystery weight must be balanced by 10. That means the mystery weight must be 10 pounds, for example. So you might have noticed something. When I was adding a number to a variable, I subtracted to make that addition go away. 
here I'm subtracting, and to make that subtraction go away, I'm doing an addition. There's a slick term for this called cancellation. And what it is to cancel a mathematical operation, so in operations like adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing, well, to cancel it, you do the opposite. So there are opposite operations. Addition and subtraction are opposites. Then multiplication, and again, I'm going to use the dot. Multiplication and division are opposites. So what that means, if you want to undo an addition, you got to subtract. If you want undo multiplication, you got to divide. So for example, I'm going to undo plus three, use minus three. To undo minus a half, use plus a half. To undo four times, use divide by four. Or you could do this one too. You can say four times or times four, either way. So to undo, divide by two, use two times. So again, addition, subtraction are opposites. Multiplication, division are opposites. They will undo each other. So many questions about that. I'll do some more examples. So if we have x minus 7 equals 21, well, we want to get x by itself. Solving for x is we want x by itself. And the reason is once x is by itself, it's going to tell us whatever number we get on the other side balances x. And that tells us what x is. It's like x is a mystery weight. So you have a mystery weight and it's balanced with 20 pounds. Well, then the weight of that mystery weight is 20 pounds.
So if this is balanced, X must weigh 20 pounds. So that's the reason why we're going to try to get X by itself. And so when we solve for X, that's what we're doing. Questions about that before we launch into this example? All right. So we're going to get X by itself. So we have an X on one side and a number on the other side. And then that tells us what number balances X. So that identifies X. So we're going to use our opposites. Subtraction, what's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. So if we subtract 7, we have to add 7. And those will cancel out. They undo each other. But again, if we're adding seven pounds to this side, let's add seven pounds to this side. That requires us to do that. And so what we get, these cancel out or they go to zero. And again, adding or subtracting zero to x won't change it. But we can take a shortcut here. We can just say they cancel out, skip that whole zero step, because it doesn't change anything. And so we get x is balanced by 28, or x equals 28. And so that's going to be our answer. Questions about that? All right. So let's say we have another one. So 2x equals 34. Now, it's just a habit in algebra. When a number is next to a variable, it actually means we're multiplying them together. So this really means 2 times x is 34. So we want to undo this times 2 or 2 times. So how do we do that? We divide. You divide by 2 on both sides. The 2 times will cancel with the divide by 2. Same here. Again, if we cut this side in half, we've got to cut this side in half to keep things balanced. So timesing 2, dividing by 2, those undo each other, so they disappear. And then 32, I'm sorry, 34, if we cut that in half, we get 17. And so we find out x is balanced by 17, so x must be 17. Now you might be wondering, what's going on with this cancellation? So this is sort of a little off to the side. But what you're doing... You can think of it like this. You're being a little strategic with your division by 2. We can't divide 2 into x, but we can divide it into 2. So you could rewrite it as 2 divides into 2. That's 1 times. And 1 times x. This is going to be 17 over here. And then again, you multiply any number by 1. It doesn't change anything. X is 17. So that's one way you can do this. But the cancellation, just to say that they cancel, that's just easier. Let's go faster. So let me do another one. So x over 3 equals 6. 
This fraction bar, it actually means division. So a fraction and a division are the same thing. So since we have a division by three, the way we cancel that division is we do the opposite of division, multiply. And again, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So multiply by three, divide by three, they're going to cancel. Or again, you could think of it as three goes into three one time. One times x is x. You could think of it like that too. So well, let's just do the cancellation, just faster. So times by three, divide by three, those undo each other. We're left with x is 18. And that's going to be our answer. Now, sometimes we have to do many things. Um, so far, we just have to do or undo one operation. Sometimes you got to do more than that. Let's say of something like this. Actually, let me write it a little differently. Well, we can do it like this. So this is multiplying by a fraction. So since you're multiplying by two thirds, you can divide by two thirds. And again, multiplying by two thirds, dividing by two thirds, they cancel out. So this is 12 divided by 2 thirds, going to review some fraction division, or 12 over 1 divided by 2 thirds, going to set up for our fraction division here. We do KFC, we keep the first fraction, we flip the second fraction, and we change division to multiplication. Then when we multiply fractions, we go directly across. So this will be 36, or here, I'll go through the steps. 12 times 3, 1 times 2, 36 over 2, or 18. Again, this means division, so 36 divided by 2. So you might have to work with fractions. Now this actually isn't the problem I had in mind. Let me do the same problem slightly differently. There's two different ways you'll see a problem like this written. You can see it like this. Or you might see it like this. Here's an example. You might see it like this, where you have x times 2, and then everything's divided by 3. Well, now we've got really what looks like two operations, a multiply and a divide. Now, I kind of want to follow the order of operations on this backwards, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a bit. Um, in this case, it really won't matter. But typically what we want to do, we want to undo the division by 3 and then undo the multiplication by 2. And the way you can think of it, if you think of order of operations, when you have these fraction bars, What we usually do is we come up with a number here. Let's say we knew what x was. And then once we got this number, we divide by the 3. What we do with solving for x, we go through the order of operations backwards, undoing the operations.
So we'll follow the order of operations, but backwards. And instead of performing the operations, we undo the operations. So usually what would happen is we would do the multiplication first and then do the division. But we're gonna go through this backwards. We're going to undo the division and then undo the multiplication. So what you would usually do We would do this, again, if we knew what x was. We would multiply, and then we divide. In this case, if we go backwards, we're going to undo division by 3 and undo two times x. Questions about that? We'll do, we'll do a bunch of these where we're going through backwards. Like we saw 2x plus 3 equals 7. We use this technique. All right, I might just discuss a review order of operations real quick. So let's go back to this problem. So we're going to undo division by 3 by multiplying by 3. Multiplying, divide, cancels. We did 2x. And this is 36. So now we undo the 2 times x. Well, the opposite of multiplication is division. So we now divide both sides. These cancel, we find x is once again balanced by 18. Questions about that? So let me review order of operations. So this, hopefully this will kind of make sense. It might be a bit of a mystery if it's been a while since you've seen the order of operations. So, the classic mnemonic for order of operations is PEMDAS. So that's parentheses, then exponents, multiplication, with division. Um, these are treated sort of at the same level. So the way you handle multiplication and division is that you, when you have them, you just go left to right. So I'm going to draw left to right. And you just perform the multiplication or division as you come across going left to right. But you don't even get to do this until you get rid of the parentheses. You take care of exponents, and then you take your expression, go left to right, and do division, multiplication, division, multiplication, just clean them all out. And then once you've gotten rid of all the multiplications and divisions, and addition, and subtraction. And again, they act as a group. So you've cleaned these out, you've cleaned these out, you've cleaned these out. All you have left are additions and subtractions. Again, start on the left of your expression and go to the right, subtracting and adding or adding and subtracting. So usually, this is the order of operations. So what we do 
when we solve for x, we're going to undo everything moving in the opposite direction. So this means we undo addition and subtraction first, then we undo multiplication and division, then we undo exponents, and then we undo what's going on inside parentheses. So order of operations, it's PEMDAS. For undo, it's LADMEP. No, no, SAL, oh, wait, no, oh, sorry, I'm getting this. Sad MEP. Okay, it's not a very good mnemonic, but we do PEMDAS for the order of operations. We do Sad MEP when we're undoing those to solve for X. So, anyway, that's the master plan. So, let's take a look at a common equation to solve. Do a minus here. There we go. 2x minus 7 equals 15. Now, usually with the order of operations, we would multiply and then subtract. That's how we would usually do this. But for the undo, we're going backwards. We undo minus seven, we'll undo two times x. So that being the case, well, let's get to work. So we're going to undo this one first. So to undo it, the opposite of subtraction is addition. So we add 7 to both sides. Again, keep them balanced. These will cancel. Now we get to undo this. How do you undo multiplication? Division. Again, Divide both sides, keeping it balanced. And we find x is balanced by 11. So that means if x is a mystery weight, it's balanced by 11, that means x must be 11 pounds. Questions about that? All right, let me see here. So the other thing that comes up, there's two other points to mention. Um, one is distribution, the other is like terms. So let's take a look at like terms. So. Now let's see, maybe, We'll do like terms. So I'm going to start out with an example. Let's say I have three fives. Let's say I add three fives together. Well, okay. No, 
know it's 15. But we typically can write this another way. Remember what multiplication is? It's repeated addition. So if we're adding three fives, we're going to have three times five. Now let's say I decide to, over here, have another set of fives. I've got one, two, three, four fives. So I have four times fives. Now, let's say I want to add these collections of fives. So I got my first collection. We'll call this collection A, call this collection B. Let's add the collections. So we could say 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's collection A. Plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's collection B. Well, how many fives do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 fives. So that's 7 times 5. But I could also add this another way. I could take the 3 times 5 and the 4 times 5 and add those. We could do this. So there's kind of a shortcut here. We know this is 7 times 5 because well, we added these using all those 5s. But we can kind of do a shortcut here. There's a pattern maybe you can see. We can do something like this. If we have 3 times 5 plus 4 times 5, we're going to get 7 times 5. And we can come up with this and we just add the 3 and the 4. Now let me show you another example with x's. So what do we do here? Well, what we can do, 2x is, again, multiplication is repeated addition. So we're adding 2x's. Plus, so there's three more x's. OK, I'm really sorry. The last problem, it was the 3 times 5 plus the 4 times 5. You wrote it was 3 plus 4, and then you did 5 plus 5. Is that what you did? Oh, 3 plus 4 in parentheses okay. times 5. Times, oh, 5. Okay. And then it was 7 times 5? Correct. Okay, and then that's it, right? That was it. Okay, Correct. good. <laughs> Just checking, sorry. No problem. So, 2x's, 3x's. How many x's do we have in total? Well, there's five x's. We get this. So there's a shortcut here. If we take 2x plus 3x, again, 
to get this answer, you just add the numbers in front of the axis and we get the same answer. So this is called combining like terms. So this is just a little shortcut. Now, let me show you another version. Let's say we mix up the variables. I want to see the time. Okay. So let's say we have this. Let's say we have this. Now, again, I'm going to do it the long way. 3x's, x plus x plus x. We have two y's. Two more x's. And then finally, four y's. So, if you look at the number of x's, we have one, two, three, four, five x's. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six y's. So again, if we break up these multiplications into additions, and then we just count how many of these variables that we have, well, there's one, two, three, four, five x's. So five x's. And then two plus four y's is six y's. But again, there's a shortcut. Because the downfall with this approach. What if we're not dealing with like threes and twos and fours? What if we're dealing with thousands and ten thousands? We don't want to be writing ten thousand x's or y's. So the shortcut is three plus two for the x's, two plus four for the y's, or five x plus six y. So this is the idea of combining like terms. And this is a much faster way of doing it. So how does this come up when we're solving for x or y? Well, let's say we have this. Now again, the solve for the variable, we need it to be by itself balancing with a number. So we need a variable by itself on one side, balancing with a, with a number. The problem here is we have variables on both sides. So what we're going to do, we're going to cancel this variable on one of the sides. So what this means, we're going to take 4y, 
minus 10 equals 6 plus 2y. I'm going to cancel this. Now, I'm going to subtract 2y. And it's just going to cancel out. Now, if you were to combine the like terms, you'd have 2 minus 2, which is 0, times y. Or you get something like this. If you combine like terms, you'll get the 2 minus the 2, or you get 0y, and that's just 0. So when you combine the like terms, it's just going to get 0. Now again, what I do to one side, though, I've got to do to the other. So this will be 4 minus 2y, or 2 times y. So we get 2y minus 10 is equal to 6. So I'm just going to put a line here because this is the actual cancellation. This is the mathematics of the cancellation. Any questions about that? All right. So now, again, we're going to go backwards through order of operations. Usually with order of operations, times, and then we subtract. Instead, we're going to go backwards. We undo subtraction. We undo times. Add 10 to both sides. These will cancel. We'll get 2y. 16, undo multiplication by 2, we do division by 2, we get y is equal to 8. Questions about that? I'm going to do another one. All right. So, If I'm going too fast, let me know. So let's say we have this. Again, we've got the variable in two sides. We don't want that. We only want the variable on one side. So let's cancel it on one of these sides. So I'm going to subtract 5z. And the reason I'm going to subtract 5z instead of 10z, if I do 5 minus 10z, I'm going to get a negative 5z and just trying to avoid negative numbers. Maybe a little more complicated, but they work just as fine. So these will cancel. 10 minus 5 is going to be 5z. Now we're going to cancel the plus 6. And we're going to get a negative number anyway. Negative numbers are fine. All they mean is they sit to the left of 0. Now we're going to divide by 5. Now, of course, it doesn't divide evenly. So what's going to happen? Remember, division is the same as a fraction. So we can write this as a fraction, as negative 2 over 5. And this is just a customary thing in math. We can call this negative 2 fifths. We can bring the negative out in front. Questions about that. All right. There's two more types of problems. Well, there's three more, it looks like. There's distribution. I want to cover distribution here. So for distribution,
Now, let's say we have this. Three times x plus two. So this is one piece. It's something inside parentheses. Well, three times. Multiplication is repeated addition. So this means x plus two plus x plus two plus x plus two. Now we haven't talked about this yet, but addition and multiplication are associative and commutative. So that means that the order doesn't matter. Five plus three is the same as three plus five. And we can group them however we want. So we could group the x's like this. And then we can group up the twos. So you have one, two, three, three x's. So we've seen this before. And then one, two, three, three twos. Well, there we go. So that's going to be your answer. Now, to do this every single time is a real pain. So we're going to use a shortcut. We're going to take this three and distribute it to the x in the two using multiplication. And this is called distribution. So this little trick is just a shortcut. It, cuts out all this extra work, and we just turn this into a one-line thing. So how does this work for solving for x? Well, one of the things we're going to do, we're solving for x, we distribute first. Usually, not always, but it's something that you can do. So let's say we have this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to distribute that to So we get 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 We'd usually write this as 3 times 2 is 6. So 2 times 1, what's going to be 2? Let's make those notes there that we're still distributing. So now we can combine like terms. So for the 2x plus 2 plus 5x, well, we've got 2x's and 5 more x's. So that's going to become 7x's plus 2. It's going to be 23. Now we start on doing things, subtract two from both sides. Divide by seven on both sides. And we get x equals three. So questions about that. So there's two more types of problems I want to do. Um, the last one for solving for x where we're getting a number 
This involves something with fractions, and this can be a tricky problem. So what do we do here? So I'm going to give you a pro tip here. Let's find a number that each of these divides into. Well, we only have three and four. Those are the numbers we have. So find a number. And they go into without a remainder. Or as we sometimes say, they go in evenly, but that can be kind of confusing. They go in without a remainder. So this mystery number, we we'll almost gave it away. Three will divide into this number and four will divide in this number. What number would that be? Well, here we go. If you take 12 divided by 3, you get 4. Also, 12 divided by 4, you get 3. So 3 will divide into 12. 4 will divide into 12. So the mystery number. It's 12. All right, so we found this number. What do we do with it? The goal is we want to get rid of these denominators. These just make life really hard. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to multiply everything here by 12. So what I mean by terms, I mean like the two thirds, this thing, this thing. These are called terms. So what we'll get I'm going to put this in parentheses. So we multiply through by 12. You might have heard that phrase before. And when we do that, what's going to happen? Remember with the uh, canceling of division, when we multiply, we can also say this number divides into that number. We're going to do that here. So here's where these denominators go away. It's easier to work with the uh, without the fractions. Three goes in the twelve. Four times. Four goes in the twelve. 
three times. Dorigo's in the 12, four times. So what this leaves us with, the three is going to disappear. We have four times two. The four disappears. We'll have three times, and this is why I put this in parentheses. It's going to be three times the entire top part, not just the three X, but everything up here. And then we have four times five. So now this is going to be easier. We don't have the denominators anymore, and we can just go ahead. Just going to check my math here. It looks good. All right. I think we're good to go. So we'll get 4 times 2, which is going to be 8, 3, three times 3x three plus 1, which is equal to 4 times 5, which is 20. But then we got to distribute this 3. So what we're going to get, 8 plus now we have three x's. We multiply that by three. So we take the three x's. Now we have three x's, three x's, three x's. Well, that's nine x's total. So we have nine x. Three times one is three. Now we don't have any x's to count up, but we can add these numbers. We can count up the units. So we can have 11 plus 9x equals 20. Now this is interesting. This is a positive 11. So if you have 11 and you want to get rid of it, you want to subtract or take away 11. So we'll subtract 11 from both sides. So that leaves us with 9x is equal to 9, divide by 9, x is equal to 1. Whew. But that's how you do that. You want to cancel those denominators by finding a number that all the denominators divide into, and then multiply that number through, and then cancel. So just one thing here, I just wanted to explain this real quick, and then I'll do the last type of problem for the section, and then that'll be it for today. Any questions about this? All right. So just to make a note, 3 times 3x. Again, this will be 3x plus 3x plus 3x. I'm going to add 3x up three times. So that just gives us 9x total. But then the shortcut here, we could just do this. Again, it's just another little shortcut to make things go faster. So the last thing to do is going to be these. No numbers, only variables, and even some numbers. We'll throw some in here. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed the shortcut on there. It was 3x times 
or three times three x times three x times three x, and then sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. So the shortcut, if you have three times three x, I get what you. we can do is we can just multiply the numbers and just let the x be on the outside. That's awesome. it. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. So like a quick way of doing this, for example, five times two X, maybe five times two would be 10 X. That's all that that means. But again, it's a shortcut. There's something else going on in the background. We're counting up the number of X's. All right. So let's say we're going to solve for C. So to solve for C, we just need to get C by itself. So what this means We've got a B here, it's positive B, or it looks like it is. Let's subtract B. And what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. Now, this will cancel, just like with numbers. But this here, we don't know anything about A and B. So since we, now they do represent numbers, we just don't know which ones. So all we can do is sort of, uh, in a sense, make a promise. We're going to say A will subtract B when we find out what A and B are. So we'll just leave it like this. And then C's over here. This is as far as we can go. Unless we know what A is and B is, we just have to leave the subtraction ready to go until someone tells us what A and B are going to be. So, let me do a version of this. Let's say we're going to do this. So let's say we're going to solve for R. Well, what we can do again, we want to get rid of this denominator. We're going to do this first. You can imagine that again with these large fraction bars, there's parentheses. So usually what we do is let's in the parentheses first and then the division following order of operations. But if we're going backwards, we're going to undo the division and then undo what's going on in the parentheses. To undo division, we multiply. So this and this, they'll cancel. And we can drop the parentheses because there aren't any other operations on this side. Finally, we're solving for R. So we got to undo this. We'll add C to both sides. And N times P plus C, again, we don't know what that's going to be, so we'll just leave it. We don't have any numbers. So we'll just say we're going to deal with it later. So we'll do N times P, then we'll add C, and then that leaves R on that side. So that's going to be our answer. Questions about that? So there's one more question, and it's the same type as this, then I'm done. That'll be it. I, I know this is kind of a long lecture, but this is a tricky problem. And this one kind of throws people for a loop.
So where does solve for age? So I'm going to kind of bring in a trick here. We talk about this thing called reciprocals. A reciprocal of a fraction is when you flip it. So the reciprocal of one third is three over one, which three divided by one is just three. So what we're going to do, another way to cancel fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. You can cancel a fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal. So what we're going to do, we'll take this V is one third pi r squared h. We're going to multiply by three. But again, because of the equal sign, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. These will cancel, so what we're going to get, 3v is pi r squared h. Now, we can think of this is pi r squared times h. So to undo this multiplication, we're going to divide by the entire piece pi r squared. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. We get 3v, and again we write the division as a fraction, sort of a format that we use. The division and the multiplication will cancel. And that's going to be our answer. I'm just going to make a quick note. Sometimes you'll see this. Let's say we're solving for C. So we're going to divide by n. We have multiplication by n, so we're going to divide by n. When we divide by n, we're dividing the entire sides by n. Because it looks like we're just dividing c one term. So does that mean we divide only one term on the left? Actually, we're just dividing the entire side. So this side just looks small. This side just looks big, but we're still dividing the entire side. So this entire side is being divided by n. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not dividing a single term and then divide a single term. You're dividing the right side, and you're dividing the entire left side. And so this would be your answer. Whew, that's it. So I hope that helps. And um, if any questions, let me know. Um, I know some of these get kind of complicated. And yeah, please ask. Other than that, have a wonderful afternoon. Um, if you have any questions about the test, the test is due Monday. And um, I'll post this up as soon as I can. And um, um, 
you know, any questions on like the homework and stuff, please ask, because that's a great way to prepare for the test. Other than that, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, bye. Bye.